are here in the Student Athletic Act, Student Activity Center, I should say, at Adam Central High School. We've got the whole gang here. Dane Filling joined by Coach Eric Myers from the Jay County Patriots. We've got Troy Hahn and Josh Howard, our officials today. We are going to bring you some um, extemporaneous uh, content here in between the two dual meets for Adam Central as Bishop Dwenger and Huntington North face each other right now in a short round two. That way we can bring you all of our sponsors and commercials here. And if you didn't join us on 92.7 earlier, Adam Central was a winner 58-12 to 12 over Bishop Dwenger. And that Bishop Dwenger singlet being worn right now, there's a, there's a, I can picture a wrestler wearing it, but I can't think of who I'm thinking of. I, I believe that singlet's from my era. <laughs> I think so too. <laughs> Dwenger has uh, a pretty good squad here size-wise, but uh, I was saying earlier while you were still weighing in down there in Jay County that um, they've seemed to have a pretty well-traveled schedule as far as wrestling just about every top team in Northeast Indiana, and I know from their standpoint as far as the summit goes and their sectional, that should make them pretty battle-tested, but um, not quite as good of a team as they had maybe two or three years ago when they were in serious contention at 2 A. Yeah, I, I think they're, you know, uh, it's kind of the cycle that some teams have and a lot of teams have where, you know, you, you build up and then you might have a, a down year or two and then you're working to build up again. I'm sure they'll be back where we're used to having him in no time. Um, yeah, I was, I was glancing through these ACAC brackets and I, I was going to ask you earlier today, um, when is the Northeast 8 seed meeting? I um, am not privy to that information. Okay. I did not um, get the invite, so I don't know. I know that they have the um, JV conference, and something tells me that they may wait until Friday to seed it. That sounds familiar. I, I think I discussed that with uh, Jimmy Lynn a, a few weeks back in the – the East Noble, New Haven, Jay County um, girls duel. And I th he may have said something like that where uh, they have that the JV, I mean. JV yeah, conference. JV conference. And while yeah. they're doing that, the head coach. And last year, I believe that's what they did because last year was the first year for the JV conference. Okay. I had a young man uh, bragging about his JV conference championship last year today in class. Asked if it was worth bonus points. I told him, no, that's not, <laughs> that's not how this uh how this works. Now, how so, many matches do those kids normally get in that JV tournament? Hmm, that's a good question. In the JV, like how many matches do they have coming into the JV tournament no, or just in the tournament? In the tournament. I, j I was just wondering how deep that conference is uh, that they're able to put together a tournament the night before with just the Some JV. Some of the kids to, to reach the finals were wrestling three times, most of them wrestling twice. That's great. So uh, probably five to seven through the middle, I believe. That's a great opportunity for those kids, especially I, I know coaches have mentioned this before, but a lot of times uh, those JV matches are somewhat sparse here at the end of the season. Yeah, it's a problem that I think every team faces. I know Belmont's facing it, Adam Central facing it. It's a combination of it being a very difficult sport, it also being a very physical sport that takes a toll on your body, and some kids just aren't willing to put in the work when they don't see a path to it paying off and what you end up with. And uh, the joke has always been at, at Belmont, we don't take the team picture till the end of the year uh, because we don't have the Photoshop skills to, to cut out this kid and that kid and this kid. Uh, a lot of times the coaching staff won't take the state runner up picture until until around this time because there's too many kids that drop out in the, in the January weeks. That's that's great. That's that's a good plan there. So they they don't take the, like the yearbook picture early in the year. They do take a um, like the paid package uh, photography yeah picture, yeah. but the picture that they would post for winning team state or state state headline. runner up. <laughs> yeah, Josh not on here either. I saw it. You saw it. <laughs> We're up here, there, down there, but that's okay. Uh huh. 
So, like we said, we've got Adam Central and Huntington North. Right now we're watching the 144 match between Carson Wolpe and Kenyon Buckland. I was able to watch Huntington North last week as they wrestled South Adams, two weeks ago actually. And I saw Huntington North as they wrestled Belmont in the NE8 duels. Of course, Huntington North, our host for Saturday's NE8 tournament. And uh, Eric, I'll, I'll pin this on you, ask you the question. We're going to be changing up our plans on Saturdays here for the next couple weeks. We're going to switch the first round of the upcoming tournaments on Saturdays to YouTube, free up a little 92.7 time, and jump in during the, what is, the uh, what is that, the quarterfinals? No, the semifinals. Well, whatever the second yeah. round is, depending on the tournament, um, giving our listeners an opportunity to make sure that they don't miss a, a match, but also sneaking in some of those golden oldies that I know you love so much on Saturday mornings. I, I do love the mix that WZBE plays. Um, I, that, that first round of regional, though, that's a, that's a fun round. Um, you know, that's, it's like, a, uh, in a way, a ticket round. Your ticket round to semi-state, but um, then once you get through that, now that they move four on from regional, you're good to go. But... Um, that, that's always a round that that has me um, kind of on pins there. There is a lot. There is a lot of difference between losing at 8:45 on that Saturday morning, or losing all the way at 11 o'clock the following Saturday. You yeah. know, the season being a regional qualifier and a semi-state qualifier is only a matter of seven days, but it does seem to have a big effect on people's mindsets especially when there's high expectations for someone. A lot of these kids wrestling at an Adam Central, a Jay County, a Belmont, um, reaching semi-state is an expectation for the kids who have winning records or above winning records for a lot of them. And that, that like you said, the ticket round match when it comes to that regional opening round uh, is a big deal. And there's been some kids, some great wrestlers from Adams County in the last two or three years alone who haven't been able to advance out of it yeah and getting the opportunity to go up there and and wrestle at the coliseum makes it really special and i i've always been spoiled in in that way that our our semi-state is at the coliseum uh but one thing that 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 brought um brought to mind was i had a conversation with a, a coach this week that uh about how difficult it is to motivate a wrestler to continue um, to wrestle at their best once they've met or exceeded their goal. So sometimes they, they meet their goal by going to semi-state and then they, they loosen up and they just don't compete as well as, as we think they should. Or, you know, I, I see it happen um, at semi-state when a kid qualifies for state and that was their goal and you see them kind of uh, trickle down to that fourth place and then the next week whenever they walk out in the state finals, they wish they may have been a little bit more <laughs> focused so they didn't have, you know, a three-time state champ on Friday night. It is one of the true tests of this sport for sure, the mental toughness to continue to push on and it really is what separate, separates the, uh, the top wrestlers from those who have just had good seasons. There's another power slam by our buddy Troy for that match. Let's take this chance to play a round of commercials, and when we come back, we'll have more coverage of Adam Central Wrestling right after this. DDD Maintenance and Repair, owned and operated by Shane Reynolds, has your local professionals for heavy-duty truck and diesel engine repair. DDD Maintenance and Repair also offers full-service sand and glass blasting for your surface restoration projects. Whether it's getting your heavy-duty truck and diesel engine running like new or sandblasting your project to look like new, we have a blast renewing the past. Give Shane and the guys a call at 260-223-5442. That's DDD Maintenance and Repair. Miller Land Surveying is one of Northeast Indiana's premier full-service land surveying firms. From lot and boundary surveys to large topographical, commercial, and industrial surveys, Miller Land Surveying can help you with all of your surveying needs. With a seasoned staff, the latest technology, and a drive for perfection, rest assured your project will be done professionally and efficiently completed every time. MLS is proud to support today's broadcast and encourages everyone to get out and support local athletes. 
Does your smile need work? Maybe it's time for a cleaning and exam. Visit Laura Kugelhahn, DDS, and her knowledgeable caring staff at Complete Smiles on North Main Street in Bluffton. Dr. Kugelhahn would love to help you maintain your dental health or transform your smile. Whatever your needs might be, Complete Smiles is there to help you. Dr. Kukulhan is currently accepting new patients. Call 824-3100 to schedule an appointment. When you walk out of the cold winter weather, you expect your home to be as warm as it was when you left in the morning. If you're worried about the heat in your home, call Kevin McIntyre. Don't get called for stalling, because once your furnace has gone out, you're already too late. McIntyre Heating and Air Conditioning can install a new furnace to meet your needs, or Kevin can service your existing furnace. A proud member of the Decatur community for decades, Kevin is a trusted repairman and installer of new furnaces. Call McIntyre Heating and Air Conditioning. This is Ed Thurman, and I've driven across every highway and bridge in Indiana calling high school games on the radio since 1972. We take those bridges and overpasses for granted sometimes, but knowing they're made right here in Decatur at Pre-Stress puts me at ease and allows me to focus on the game. If you're looking for a career right here in Adams County, starting at over $20 an hour, go to prestressservices.com and click on Careers. From general labor with no experience to driving those long beams to the job site with your CDL, Pre-Stress might just have the job you're looking for. Luganville Excavating is a proud sponsor of high school wrestling on WZBD. Their son, Memphis, a sophomore at AC, is doing his best to overcome adversity and wrestle for the Flying Jets. Memphis has made tremendous strides and is determined to continue. You can follow his journey on Facebook at Memphis's Ride. As Luganville Excavating works hard for their customers, follow Memphis's challenge to make the team. He would love to hear from you. Welcome back here to Adams Central High School. We want to give a big shout out to Coach Greg Snyder for giving us all of the connections that we need to pull this one off. As uh, it's just a little bit different here in this new building built by Wygan Construction, you just heard the ad. We don't get the service that we get in the hangar and uh, it would not be possible to bring you this broadcast without their cooperation. We certainly want to thank Athletic Director Jeff McCullough, who allowed us to broadcast this match on such short notice. Of course, we want to thank our station owner for also being flexible with us and uh, not batting an eye when I told him we're going to do two different broadcasts from two different sites with two different people with two different sets of ads. And that's the way we're going to do it. And he lets us do it. And uh, we're certainly blessed here in Adams County to have WZBD and the wrestling coverage all the way around. So, Dane, does, um, it, it looks like it, but you would know better than I, uh, do m most of AC's duels, are, are they held in the hangar? They are. This is okay. the first time that we've been over here this year. I've been lucky enough to be at just about every Adam Central match this year. We did miss the New Haven match because of an illness, and we didn't make it over to Lafayette Jeff. Okay. But other than that, we've been with Adam Central all season long, so it's been fun. I think I, I only had, in duels, I only had two opportunities to wrestle in the hangar, and those were both the Adam Central and Belmont duel, and the rest of the duels were wrestled in the uh, PE gym. Yeah, well, I was just talking about um, my memories of the, the old wrestling gym and uh, going to watch a lot of matches in there, and it was a nice, intimate setting for a wrestling match both middle school and high school, and I, I kind of miss it. Yeah, it was. It, uh, you had the curtain down on one side, and, you know, they would uh, dim the lights and, and crank up the tunes. So it was a pretty good setting. Um, and then I was thinking, uh, along with those two duels, uh, I believe every other year uh, Adam Central hosted the ACAC tournament, and the ACAC tournament was in the hangar. Um, I believe... <laughs> The mats overlapped in the corners. Okay. So it was a, a pretty tight one to put three mats in it, if I remember correctly. I do uh, I do remember some pretty fun Friday night ACAC wrestling tournaments there in the late 90s that uh, filled the filled the stands and, and made for some some pretty exciting weekends as a personally as a wrestling fan in my current situation. I love the setup because it allows you to go all night Friday night, watch all the wrestling, 
switch gears, sleep for four or five hours, and jump right back into it on Saturday. And that's what WZBD will do for you this and weekend. For a wrestling coach, uh, w we kind of appreciate having a Saturday off. <laughs> I'm sure you uh, do. Um, I, uh, we, we usually find something else to do there, but uh, it's nice, you know, with that state tournament series and the the tournaments prior, you don't you don't get a whole lot of Saturdays free uh, during the wrestling season. I want to tell you that Johnson's Auto Sales on the quarter of 13th Street in Adams and Decatur, where you always drive quality at a better price, is proud to be a wrestling booster, both for Adams Central and Belmont and South Adams. We want to thank them for coming on this year and joining us as a wrestling booster. Another wrestling booster that has joined us in the last two years is Ahead of the Curb Driving Academy. And Eric, you and I are in similar parenting positions. That time is coming before we know it, that time to think about learner's permits and uh, licenses and, and adding an extra car to the fleet. Yeah, uh, it's scary in some ways, <laughs> and then the, the convenience of it seems a little bit appealing, though, too. Our YouTube engineer back home is telling us that we aren't quite loud enough, so we'll turn that up just a little bit. Okay. We're not quite into the action. We're in the commentary portion of this. So... We are looking currently at the ACAC brackets. Anything that jumped out to you in that meeting? Um, I, I think uh, there's going to be some interesting matches because in the ACAC duels, you don't have everybody in the same weight classes that you see them in the in the tournament. Um, so some some matchups that we haven't seen for seen this year, um, and then uh, you know. Adams Central, Jay County, South Adams, Bluffton. Um, all our teams are pretty tough in there, and Southern Wells is, uh, is definitely improved, and they, they snuck a, guy, a few guys in there with some pretty good seeds. So uh, it should be some good wrestling on Friday. One match that I'm uh, very interested in is um, Wank and Curry. How many times have those two wrestled in the last two years off it, the top of your head. It seems like quite a bit, but I think... But not I, this year. I believe they only wrestled... They have not wrestled this year. I believe they only wrestled once last year at 195 early in the year, and then um, and Curry won that match. Uh, I think he hit a switch towards the end of the, the match to win by a point, and that's, that's pretty much every one of their matches. I think it's been a point or two. Um, I, I'm not sure who's ahead in that. I think Curry might be slightly ahead of Wink, um, but... It's always a pretty enjoyable match to watch. What about the uh, other wank down uh, lower? He's new to the lineup. Tell he, us a little bit about him. Yeah, he, he'll he be back in action for us. Um, he, he got some, he got his feet wet at try high last week, and um, he, he'll be in the bracket. Uh, excited to see what he can do. Um, that's a tough weight class, though, with John's there, and uh, Kale Beer has been really solid. Uh, lately, he had a look like he had a pretty good result against Bollinger, um, and I saw tonight he beat a Henry kid that uh, is a pretty solid wrestler. So uh, between him and then Rupp is another solid freshman that makes for a tough weight class. And what Wink really needs to do is um, what what we've told him is he needs to get a win somewhere there so that uh, he he won't have enough matches for the the ten match seating criteria at sectional. So he's got to knock somebody off so that he can get that head to head seating criteria. Criterion. Criterion. It's a it's a seldomly used word, but it is it is in there. Kind of like medium and media. Right now, Rex and I are using two different media to bring you these two matches. You didn't know you're going to get an English lesson in here, did I, you? I appreciate it. <laughs> always a always a good thing to brush up a little bit. We got an injury here to the Dwinger wrestler. Now, one other one. A lot of people don't know how seating meetings work and they look at some of the brackets and they think now how did that happen and I think one of those might be at 285 pounds where the undefeated Juan Cruz has dropped to the bottom of the um, the bottom of the bracket despite his undefeated record and he's the two seed yeah so there was some discussion there um, the reason Zach Worm is the number one seed is because uh, once you've met that that initial threshold of having the enough matches which uh, for the ACAC, it's a five match minimum. For sectional, it's a 10 match. But to be considered for a seed, you have to have five matches in for the ACAC. 
Then just like sectional, the very first criteria after that threshold is that you're a um, semi-state quarterfinalist. So that means you've advanced to the second round of the semi-state. And uh, the kind of the controversy that, that came in there is uh, a lot of us didn't realize that Juan Cruz had lost in the first round at semi-state. So he was not a quarterfinalist, um, and Zach Worm was. Uh, and we kind of – I needed a clarification just to be sure that, you know, that that's – you just have to meet that state quarterfinalist threshold, and then it moves down from there. So um, – Realistically, a, a semi-state champion or a state placer isn't above a state qualifier. It's just once you meet that threshold, you can be seated over people who do not have that criterion. Um, then after that, uh, then it goes to uh, win percentage, and then if win percentage is equal, then after that win percentage, you would go to furthest advancement in the state tournament series. It's certainly a complicated process and one that uh, I feel – over the years has changed and has morphed despite the actual criteria themselves not changing as people have interpreted and discussed and, and moved. It seems like every time we get into an agreement as to how they're supposed to be interpreted, then they go ahead and they change those criteria and then you have to do it all over again. Yes. Now also in that 285 weight class, it is Southern Wells' best wrestler, Peyton Long. He is he is a quality heavyweight there. Absolutely. And um, I, one of his two losses is to Juan Cruz, and I don't believe um, I don't believe did Worm wrestle him at the ACAC duels. I don't. I, I don't feel know. like Worm wrestled Long. Okay. Okay. So that that could have been both of his losses. We'll pull it up here. I, I thought that Worm set out a match or two, but I don't know if that was one of Worm them. beat him four to nothing. Okay. And I, you know, I, I in discussions with um, some other coaches, I said, you know, that could be a kid that could uh, just, you know, have the right draws and, and thread that needle to a state qualification. That's how good I feel like he is. Yeah, certainly an interesting one. We saw, we talked to his mom a little bit last year when we were at Woodland, I believe. And uh, he is one who I believe traveled, I think he traveled with his Adam Central team over the off season when they went down to Disney. Yes, Does that sound right? Yeah, he was their, their 285 at the Disney duels. So one of the cool parts about a conference tournament is that familiarity. And I know the mm -hmm. ACAC and not to the same extent the NE8, but they're still sort of close knit rivalries and communities. You get some of these other big school conferences. I know when I taught at Huntington North, there was a time there where Huntington North didn't even wrestle everybody in their conference during the regular season because the travel distance was so great that there really wasn't that feeling of of having that kind of rivalry. And you see that sometimes with bigger schools, but certainly in the ACAC, there's no there's no worrying about who's that kid. We You know everybody there because um, you've coached against them in middle school in the regular season and for a lot of these teams they're in the same sectional. Well, and it's crazy to think that some some of the people um, that are competing in the ACAC, or most of them, don't recall Leo being in the conference or, or Garrett being in the conference. Oh, but don't you remember those Zaire Mitchell matches? Uh, they, they were wonderful. <laughs> that was <laughs> worth the price of admission. It was, my grandma used to bring me just to watch them. And uh, I think I don't know if Dusty's here. We usually see him here. Maybe not. Maybe he didn't get the memo on the Wednesday switch. <laughs> well, let's uh, queue up another round of commercials here. And when we come back, we will tell you a little bit about who to expect in this Adam Central lineup when they take on the Huntington North Vikings. And we'll tell you a little bit more about our coverage next week when it comes to High School Wrestling Weekly and the like. Town & Country Auctioneers has teamed up with Shaw Real Estate to offer you the most comprehensive auction and real estate services in the area. Whatever real estate or personal property you're buying or selling, we have you covered. We provide our customers with the utmost care in handling you or your loved one's property. You can contact Mitzi Gardner or myself, Corbin Boltzmeyer, at 260-724-8899 to walk with you every step of the way throughout the process. Town & Country is at 211 North 13th Street, Decatur, Indiana. 
Wygand Construction in Fort Wayne is building landmarks that impact the lives and communities we serve. At Wygand, we believe that our most important responsibility as a building contractor and construction company is to stand by our commitments to our clients and to our community. That's why we believe in supporting high school athletics, where our local teenagers show their commitments to their teammates, their coaches, their schools, and their communities. Wygand Construction. Trust. Well built. Hi everybody, this is Steve Fiesel in beautiful Bluffton, Indiana, the home of Velocity Motors. Winter doldrums getting you down? Tired of going out and seeing if old Betsy was going to start for you this morning? Velocity Motors has your answer. Stop in and see us for your next ride. Since 2009, Velocity Motors has been helping folks with their next car. Credit your issue? Velocity Motors has financing options for almost everyone. Come to Velocity Motors where you're always greeted with a smile and treated with respect. Soul Pig Barbecue on 2nd Street in Decatur across from the courthouse features traditional and not so traditional barbecue, brisket, smoked meats, pulled pork, wings, burgers, soul food, steaks, fish, seafood, and a full bar service. Bring the spouse and the young ones to Soul Pig and enjoy the family side or dine on the bar side. Large portions ensure no one will go home hungry after a Soul Pig meal. Follow Soul Pig on Facebook for the daily weekend and entertainment specials. Once again, we want to thank all of our sponsors who help us bring high school wrestling to you on the radio and on the web on YouTube. We want to thank to everybody who's listening there tonight. We are halfway through the evening. If you are confused and trying to figure out where Rex is, he's over at the Stardome calling the South Adams and Norwell match. Right now we're watching Josh Howard run across the mat, trying to find near fall for Bishop Dwanger. Huntington North wrestler getting a reversal down 11 to two. It looks like it is nine to six Dwanger in the lead in the team score. Any updates from the uh, South Adams Norwell? No, I do, I do not. We might see what Rex can put together for us and what weight they're starting at. We are going to have, like we said, the Vikings and the Jets here in probably 20 to 30 minutes, somewhere around there, I would think. Bishop Dwenger, I don't know how they wrestled the uh, SAC tournament. They still do an SAC tournament. They I'm only do sure. SAC duels now. I'm not sure. I... I I don't remember seeing the, the results from the SAC duels. Well, let's switch our focus for a little bit and talk about the girls as we've wrapped up the girls' season here last week on Friday. It was a fun day. It was a long day, but it was well worth it. I had a nice little tra chat with Aubrey Troutner, who is down there with the manager's um, mat side. She had a great tournament, and you would think with the skill that she showed um, against the likes of a Kyra Tomlinson that she has a very good shot of returning to a state championship match um, next season. Absolutely. Just a freshman, correct? Um, I, I kind of, I saw her, her results. She had some really solid results as we went through the season. And then uh, whenever we got to the semi-state and state, especially at state, I had a little bit more time to watch her. And she is a, she is a really solid wrestler. She's really good on top, um, really aggressive, and uh, I, I was very impressed with her. Well, we talked to Kyra after she got a chance to receive her medal and uh, skate by the, uh, the hat patrol and <laughs> on top of the podium. And the first thing that she said to me, she said, could you believe that takedown that she got right off the whistle? Because it was right off the bat, and uh, it really surprised her. And then she reeled off 14 points in a row to take a big lead in that first period. But uh, the, the tournament was great. I give a lot of credit to, J um, to Gary Myers and to Pat Culp and everybody involved, J.D. Minch, in having the foresight to realize that this was the year to expand the tournament. I think that was absolutely the right choice. The regionals uh, set up and made for four great semi-states. And I have no doubt that next year we're going to be talking about 1,200 girls, 1,300 girls, 1,400 girls. And uh, that may come whether there's IHSAA recognition or not. Yeah, and I think that 
Uh, some of the regional regionals were a little bit small, um, but I think the important part there is to have some patience because uh, the the initial regional uh, where we went regional to state, which was kind of like the semi-state now, that initial regional was small. And uh, now it's built up to where the semi-state level is. Uh, I, I felt like the ticket round, the, the feeling around the ticket round is getting comparable to the guys' ticket round. A uh, lot of excitement there, a lot of closely contested matches. Uh, I, I, I agree with you that it was a really solid step for the girls' state tournament series. And the, was there any point in the season where you thought to yourself, man, I missed, I missed the uh, McConaughey gym? I, there wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I, will I, I will always remember uh, the time that, that we spent there and, and the, the humble beginnings of what seemed like a niche sport that we weren't really sure where it was going. Mm -hmm. I think in another five to ten years, we're going to look back on it even more fondly as, man, I can't believe that's what it used to be like. I mean, sure. because you would walk in there, especially in that regional, and it would just be headlocks and missed headlocks. <laughs> and first period falls, and, you know, you just quickly eliminated the girls who really didn't have any business advancing, and you worked forward. But now, that semi-state, what I saw at Rochester, I mean, you've got – You've got girls who didn't qualify for state who are able to run tilts and put the legs in and are, are doing all kinds of takedown combinations that you just didn't see from some of those midweight girls four or five years ago. Absolutely, and I, the sports really evolved. And I, I was talking to uh, Coach uh, Shepard from Western, and he, he brought up a point that I, I hadn't thought of it that way. And he said, you know, well, next year it's just going to get even better. And you, you, sure, you think it's going to get even better, but he said, he said that you're going to have girls graduate, and then you're going to have freshman girls that come in that are even better than the last freshman class, and they just continue to get better because they've wrestled more and there are more opportunities. And I, you know, it kind of seems like an obvious thing to state, but I hadn't thought about it that way. That those, you know, you, you just keep getting better and better classes come in. Um, it, it's just. It's really a really enjoyable sport, and it's it's fun to see those girls uh, compete and have the success that they're having. Well, and I, I noted, too, on the two days of broadcasting that, that I did, I wasn't there for the regional because I was up at the Al Smith, but I just I see so much joy and delight and sort of fire from some of these girls that a lot of times I don't see from the boys uh, midway through the season, towards the end of the season, a real passion for the sport. And I think I see it more from the girls in their losses than I do for the boys. And we talked about this. I've talked about it off air with a bunch of people and, and, and picked their brains on it. There's a passion there from the girls. They're out there because they want to do it, and they want to do it for themselves. They're not wrestling for anybody else. They're not wrestling because they've done it for 10 and they don't want to quit for the 11th year. They are wrestling because they like to wrestle. And it's an entire sport of girls filled with that sort of emotion. And it's just made for a, a, an even better tournament. And I think, hopefully, uh, Robert Falcons, what he saw when he was there in the morning, uh, convinced him even more that, that we're ready to move to that next step. Sure. And, uh, you know, I, I think you you explained it really well there and, and very well stated. Uh, with Mr. Falcons being there, uh, <laughs> it kind of leads into the yeah, you were talking about the hat and I, I saw that transpire but um, there are uh, parts of girls wrestling that are you know guys and girls are different uh, they act different they react different to different circumstances and myself going from uh, you know coaching a varsity guys uh, super duel uh, one Saturday to maybe being at a girls uh, invitational the next Saturday uh, it's amazing um, the different conversations that occur between the, the guys and the girls wrestlers. Um, you know, the, the, it's just a, a <laughs> almost a completely different um, sport to coach, uh, even though you're, you're competing the same way. Uh, just the personalities and the way they go about things, it's, uh, it, it's fun to look at the differences between the two. Well, Rex and I have certainly enjoyed it, and we're already looking forward to Next year, I know that talking to a lot of people last week on Friday at Kokomo, 
Um, we had a couple people ask, you know, what what could you guys do for us? You know, if we have a match on this night, could you come up and call it? And uh, I think it's been great exposure. And once again, I want to give credit to uh, our station owner and everybody on the Z team for what I think most people would call a pretty crazy idea uh, of what we were able to do this year. And we made it happen. And it, it, it was a lot of fun. We brought a lot of exposure to, to your team, to the girls, but also just sort of treated them with the respect that, that I know they deserve. And I think built up a lot of that from the surrounding communities. Sure, and our girls were so thankful that you guys were there and they thought it was so cool to be able to come up and do interviews. And, you know, not that they um, took it for granted, but it was it was also really cool to see whenever you get to the semi-state level that our girls were kind of, the Jay County girls were used to, you know, you guys being there and doing interviews. And then whenever you asked some of the other semi-state champs to come up and talk to you, they were, they were like, oh my goodness. You know, somebody's going to talk to me about this. And uh, they were so thrilled and honored to do that. And uh, that just, you know, uh, again, goes to show that um, uh, it, it was a really great thing that you guys were able to do to give exposure to girls wrestling and exposure to those girls that are going out and, and winning semi-states and, and winning state titles. Now, one last question before we go for a round, another round of commercials. If the IHSAA does sanction next year, you're pretty much in the know on most things. What does that change? What 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 changes? What does that even mean other than the medals say IHSAA and the IHSAA says that it's their championship? What but what actually changes? Well I <laughs> I I don't I, I think I'm gonna go forward with saying what I want to say here and I <laughs> hope I don't step on anybody's toes. I, I think that there are things that that uh, what the IHSA um taking it over like uh, making sure that you know you're parade of champions you're you're a little bit more uniform and things like that some things that people appreciate and some people don't appreciate them as much but uh, I think that along those same lines you just see the the um, IHSA and mr. Falcons whenever they they um, whenever they take control of something like that they have so many more people working to make sure that all the T's are dotted, <laughs> T's are dotted and the I's are crossed. <laughs> that's right. Uh, but but making sure, that's why I'm not in charge of those things. <laughs> but <laughs> making sure that those things are taken care of and just that, uh, you know, you, you have the people running a tournament and they're, they're pulled like four or five different ways where um, they're just able to run the tournament. And then um, Mr. Falcons and his crew, they're able to make sure that, you know, the mats are there and set up properly. That, you know, they're just overseeing those things and making sure that, that all everything's taken care of, the podium's there, that, that uh, you know, everybody's lined up uh, properly for the Parade of Champions, that, uh, you know, they have all the, all the schools in order. And just, you know, like I said, making sure all the uh, the I's are crossed and the T's are dotted. I think, too, some of it comes down to when you put the IHSAA name on it, the newspapers and the TV stations and the ones that haven't really been giving it its due, all of a sudden they treat it with more respect. Whether that's a good thing or a bad thing, I don't know. As far as an indictment on those, those outlets, because I, I personally have seen that once I went and watched it and started following it, I lost myself in the fact that there is no difference. That, that yeah. we haven't, uh, we don't think about it. Rex and I didn't feel any differently about it on Friday. We did not wear a tie, and Mallory did win. Mm -hmm. So that may break our streak of trying to wear ties and, and sports jackets because Adams County has come away with a lot of state runner-ups here in the in the recent years with that, with that run of bad luck for us. Yeah. But uh, I think that if you look at the media attention that it gets, I think that increases when it comes to the IHSAA. And then the, the big effect from that then is increased participation. Yeah, I, I think that, and I, I think with increased media attention, then, then you have that IHSA stamp on it. I, I know how there's been a ton of times where I've had the question, what is the IHSGW? And they've done a tremendous job building girls wrestling in Indiana. But people are, are just, uh, and I would say that these are more fringe people that are just trying to learn about the sport, and some of them may be turned off because it isn't 
a full IHSA sport, and they think you know it's more like a club sort of thing. Uh, so you put that IHSA label on it, I think it does add legitimacy. Some people would say you know that that's not needed, and I I, I disagree. Um, I feel like the IHSA will, will add legitimacy, um, but then also you you're going to bring in that idea that uh, that controversy where if the IHSA takes control of it, it will be a girls sport. And um, I think that that will eliminate the, the ability for girls to wrestle on the guy's side, which will disappoint some people. And I, I can understand why they're disappointed. Um, but uh, again, I still feel like uh, in order to grow the sport of girls wrestling in Indiana, uh, having it under the IHSA banner is, um, will be tremendous for the sport. I think that's the next step in building girls wrestling in Indiana. Well, with that, we're going to play around the message. We'll be right back with more pre-match coverage right after this. Injured in an accident, need representation in civil, criminal, or family law matters? Call DeVos, Baker, Ainsworth, and Razzo for assistance. Our office has experienced trial lawyers who can guide you through the litigation process and provide you with quality legal service at competitive rates. Call 724-2129 to schedule an appointment with one of our attorneys or visit our website at devoslaw.com for more information. Most of us take clean water for granted, but the plain truth is cities work hard to keep our waterways and stormwater sewers as clean as possible. In the field and around the neighborhood, you are the city's eyes. What you casually observe can make a difference. So if you see signs of trouble, including odd odors, unnatural water color, or signs of dumping or spills, please notify the city immediately. Be proactive. Choose to make a difference. Get more ideas on the web at decaturin.org. Quality dentistry for people of all ages. That's what you'll find at Decatur Dental Services. This is Dr. Taylor Trevere at Decatur Dental Services. We provide a wide range of dental treatment, including preventative, cosmetic, restorative, and reconstructive dentistry. Located at the corner of 224 East and Pickway Road in Decatur, we offer convenient office hours, Monday through Thursday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. and Friday, 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. For more information about our practice, please find us on Facebook or visit our website at decaturdentalin.com. When you need building materials, you need Arnold Lumber, 425 Winchester Street in Decatur, featuring lumber in a wide choice of sizes, plus doors, windows, roofing, and more. Whether it's a complete new home or remodeling, a new deck or deck repair, a new kitchen or a kitchen update, whether it's an erected or materials-only garage or pull barn package featuring quality metal, free professional designs and estimates, Arnold Lumber provides it all. Open 7 to 5 Monday through Thursday till 4.30 on Friday and 11.30 on Saturday. At Three Rivers Federal Credit Union, we're focused on empowering you to achieve financial wellness by offering the resources and support you need every step of the way. We're equally committed to bettering lives in our region through volunteerism, community funding and partnerships, college scholarships, and more. We give back to the people, places, and ideas that matter most to you. Learn more at threeriversfcu.org. Three Rivers is federally insured by the NCUA. Rising costs of gas and food putting a strain on your budget? Is your paycheck stretched a little thin? Home and auto insurance rates are on the rise. Maybe it's time to shop around for a lower rate. Give Nick Rumschwag State Farm a call at 260-724-6010 and see if we can save you a few bucks. Don't have time to call? That's okay. You can get a quote 24 hours a day at nickrumschwag.com. You can even stop in our office on North 13th Street in Decatur. Welcome back here to the Student Activity Center, Adams Central High School. A beautiful facility here for the use for the K through 12 students and a great place for some upcoming middle school matches. We talk, talk about it a lot on our broadcast and we have the last few weeks, but uh, if you are a wrestling fan, if you're one of the people listening to this YouTube broadcast right now and you're not planning on coming and watching Adam Central or Belmont or South Adams middle school teams in the next three or four weeks, shame on you. They're uh, great entertainment, there's good wrestling, there's some really talented kids, and um, as you watch these kids grow up and become high school athletes and, and you follow their careers, to me it's always more meaningful knowing where they came from. Yeah, and 
I, a pitch that I had for our um, our middle school kids was that uh, we had, I know in the last 10 years, I think we had around five state qualifiers that started wrestling in seventh grade. Uh, so I think sometimes they are intimidated by those kids that start wrestling whenever they, you know, whenever they're walking around in diapers. Uh, but a lot of kids start around seventh grade and still have a lot of success. So get out and check those out. Jay County is in action tomorrow right here, I believe. They are. Does that sound right? Yes. Talk to Coach Grumo down there. He was telling me all about it, that he is busting out the stripes for tomorrow's match. Okay. He said 35, roughly 35 wrestlers on Adam Central's roster and the same for Jay, and that they're gonna run two mats tomorrow. So check that out before you get to Friday when we do the ACAC from Bluffton. Right now we are at the 113 pounders. There are only, uh, I would say, three bouts, four bouts left in this dual meet. So we're going to bring you the lineups here for Adam Central. It looks like Coach Curry is not making any changes, at least not planned from the beginning of the evening. It'll be the same lineup for the Jets. And we'll start off with what is, I would say, undeniably Huntington North's best wrestler, and that's Luke Toysh at 150 pounds. He'll take on Max Byerly at 157. Jarrett Smith, uh, Smith will take on C.J. Jemison. At 165, Matt Heiser will take on Corbin Kalhofer. 175, Max Carr will have Dean Van Ryn. At 190, Trevor Curry will wrestle Oscar Baltazar. At 215, Keegan Bloom will have Zach Bishop. Um, trying to remember back to uh, last week, or two weeks ago when they wrestled South Adams. One of those upper weights from Huntington North is pretty good. I don't remember if it's Bishop or Carson Moyer at 285. Then a forfeit for Huntington North at 106. Kale Beer will wrestle Trenton Walker. At 120, Jackson Bingham will receive a forfeit. Dylan Ogg will wrestle Patrick Flowers at 126. At 132, it looks like Brayson's going to get a forfeit. At 138, uh, Solomon Barnum, pretty decent for Huntington North. He'll take on Matt Dubaugh, and the match will end. At 144, with Sanders Schwartz taking on Kenyon Buckland Brewer. So those are your lineups. 11 bouts set for Adam Central versus Huntington North, Dane Filling joined by a special guest coach, uh, Eric Byers from Jay County tonight. Um, we did a match oh, two or three years ago when uh, Columbia City was here over in the hangar together using the Columbia City equipment, but uh, glad that you could join me tonight for this sort of impromptu broadcast. Yeah, I, I'm glad to be here. It's not very often that I can just sit and watch a, a duel, um, so I'm, I'm happy to do it and um, happy to have the opportunity to, I guess, talk about it a little bit. Yeah, nice little break here in between for us to get ready for Adam Central versus Huntington North. I think back to the sort of abrupt start to the Adam Central season as uh, they showed up that weekend for the ACAC duels and ended up going 6-0. and And then we had their match. I'm trying to walk myself through it. I thought my my memory was better than it is to do it without looking. Oh, it was a New Haven match that we missed um, because um, because of an illness. We missed out on that one, but then on uh, that Thursday we brought you the win over Columbia City, and then we were at the New Haven Tenway for Adam Central's first or second loss of the year when they wrestled Avon, and that was a a lot of people don't realize just how closely Adam Central wrestled Avon that day. It was basically Avon's full lineup. Um, and Adam Central lost just 40 to 24. Then we brought you the match with McConaughey, along with matches against Norwell, and of course the big one at Belmont. Did you make it to the Adam Central and Belmont duel? Did you have a I duel that I did not. Our girls were at the uh, Finley um, okay. Invitational, which is <laughs> Pretty incredible tournament that you know there there are girls from um, uh, Arizona and that one there are girls uh, luckily the IHSA changed their mm -hmm. their 300 mile rule but uh, they um, th there's a team um, called Toppenish uh, from Washington State and uh, they they mainly travel all over they're kind of similar to uh, Blair Academy and uh, they were they were very impressive. I, Mallory Winter, 
not this year, but the previous year, beat a girl from Toppenish in the final. She's she's a two-time state champion and, I mean, a two-time Finley Invitational champion. Um, and uh, I, I think that this past week, uh, the mat ranked her 25th in the nation, and I think a lot of it is due to the winning that Finley Invitational. Very impressive, very cool to have that kind of opportunity here for Indiana teams. Of course, we talk about out-of-state wrestling. Uh, there was a lot of talk about out-of-state wrestling last night as the 4A champs, Crown Point, wrestled against uh, Alex Sertzis' Mount Carmel team, and it uh, sounded like Crown Point came away with the win there. I did not watch or listen to the broadcast, but it uh, sounded like a great duel, and, uh, of course, all of that just means more recognition and more um, fame for Indiana teams as uh, wrestling and high school wrestling in Indiana continues to to boom. Yeah, those those four uh, A teams, uh, wrestling four A teams, are pretty impressive, especially that top three. And um, you know, obviously, Modern Day is right in there too, and one of the better teams in the state. So, uh, a lot of talent in Indiana. So with that, we're going to, now that we've heard the lineups for this upcoming match, we're going to play a round of commercials, and we'll be right back after this. For the past 90 years, Smith Brothers has built a solid reputation by providing quality furniture that lasts for generations. They continue to employ the best construction techniques and components available in the industry and offer frame and fabric styles to satisfy every taste from transitional to traditional and all stops between. Sitting is believing. Test one of their recliners to see how quality engineering makes them stand out from other leading manufacturers. Smith Brothers of Bern. Feel the difference quality makes. Hey, do you know when and where we can recycle in Adams County? Well, I know you can recycle from 8 to 4 weekdays and Saturday 8 to noon at the transfer station next to Golden Meadows. Okay, where else? In Decatur, behind D&D Marathon on the east side of town on Thursdays, Mondays at Simon Manufacturing 27 South in Bern, and in Monroe on the third Tuesday at the fairgrounds. Plus, you can always get the latest info at AdamsCountySWMD.com. Thanks. When faced with the difficult task of making arrangements for your loved one, many emotions and questions arise. What would they want me to do if they were here? Where is the money coming from? How much should I spend? Do they want burial or cremation? The staff at Haggard, Hershey, and Zelt Funeral Home can help you navigate these tough questions. Make your wishes known and allow us to make sure that your wishes are carried out. Call Ryan Hershey or Eric Zelt at 260-724-7167 to schedule an appointment today. Don Myers Plumbing and Heating in Burn is your American Standard Home Comfort Dealer. American Standard has been in business for more than 100 years and welcomes Don Myers Plumbing and Heating of Burn as one of their independent dealers. Don Myers Plumbing and Heating and American Standard will provide your home or business with energy efficient heating and cooling equipment, saving you money. Don Myers Plumbing, Heating and Cooling at the east edge of Burn on Adams County Road, triple zero, your American Standard Heating and Air Conditioning dealer. We all know winter has an effect on driving conditions. Make sure your vehicle is ready for it with good vehicle maintenance. Hi, I'm Matt Brown, manager of Best One of Monroe, reminding you to make sure that your tires have good tread and are properly inflated. We also recommend a coolant flush every two years or 30,000 miles. If your coolant does not work well, your car can be put at risk. Right now at Best One of Monroe, we are offering $20 off a flush service. Give us a call or visit us at bestoneofmonroe.com for details. Best One, selling tires, serving people. No matter your age, health and life insurance can be confusing and overwhelming. This is Derek Bailey with Bixler Insurance. Whether you are currently on Medicare or will soon be qualifying for Medicare, we have the products and expertise to meet your needs. Under age 65 and looking for health coverage? Interested in protecting your family from an unexpected loss with a life insurance policy? We can discuss options to assure your peace of mind. Call Bixler Insurance today to schedule your free appointment. Welcome back here to Adams Central High School. We are maybe five or ten minutes away, I would say, depending on how these last two bouts go from bringing you more Adam Central wrestling here on WZBD. As we said, we're going to begin our match at 150 pounds. This dual meet right now between Bishop Dwenger and Huntington North began at 144 pounds. They're at 126 now. They've got a forfeit to come. And then 
one more bout after that. We continue to thank our advertisers for bringing us all of this content. And uh, it doesn't happen without their support. And Eric, one thing that we can talk about, and I know it's one of your favorite topics, and that is the oncoming beginning of the radio auction season. It's always exciting. I love the radio auction. Um, Almost as much as I love the secondhand store. Now, secondhand store is on another level, and maybe one day we will get there. But if you are a fan of radio auction, those are going to be on um, Monday nights, I believe. Monday nights we'll have radio auction, and um, it's just about every Monday. I think there's a couple weeks off. Let's see if I can pull it up here. I had it on my. Uh, on my schedule, but that's a great opportunity for you to uh, get your hands on some discounted merchandise and gift certificates. The first radio auction. Yes, they're on Monday nights. The very first one is going to be on Monday, January 29th. So we're less than two weeks away from that. Tune in from 7 to 9 on those nights and make sure you go to WZB.com to the radio auction um, tab on the website and find out what kind of goodies are on there. We've got some new restaurants involved this year, and um, we'll have five of those events between now and uh, early March. Yeah, the uh, commentary during the radio auction is always very enjoyable. You can get a lot of knowledge gained. It's like going to school, basically, mm -hmm. for two hours. You could probably sign up and get some PGP points. Um, <laughs> from the state DOE for, for that kind of learning environment that's, uh, that's available. As we said earlier, this is sort of the end of the regular season, a little bit bittersweet as, uh, as much as we enjoy the tournament series and everybody does. Uh, I know there is a part, at least for me, of uh, it's always bittersweet to see kids' seasons come to an end. It, it, it adds to the victory for the victor but for the loser, you feel for them as, as the season ends. And I know it's one of the reasons why I say uh, I love the Al Smith in that sort of time period because you got some kids who fall short of their goals and they can get back in the practice room and they can keep working towards it. But it's all or nothing once we get here another week and uh, you put your toe on the line in an elimination round. And it, there's only a few wrestlers in each weight class who avoid an elimination round in the first week everybody has an elimination round in the regional and so there's no protecting from that there's no buy to get yourself out of it by winning something um, everybody has to go through it yes uh, and a lot of uh, a lot of intense matches there uh, uh, a lot of joy and a lot of tears um, but that you know <laughs> that's what makes it great I think uh, the the opportunity to to win a huge match like that, and um, unfortunately, you know the agony of defeat. And um, I, I think that it's just the the opportunity to go out and compete is is the great part of it. And one of the conversations that I have with my young one a lot is, uh, as a nine year old, I tell him all the time, "You need to learn how to lose better." And I think there's a lot of lessons taught in wrestling when it comes to to losing and learning how to lose and, and learning how to pick yourself up. And it's one of the comments that I made talking about the girls tournament is uh, some of the facial expressions from the girls in losses have been really telling about their personalities and what kind of people they're going to become when they're adults because they are able to pick themselves up off the mat and give their opponent a hug and look towards the next one. And, and sometimes the boys aren't very good at that. Yeah, and I think that's such a difficult thing. Um, it, yeah, you don't really want to talk to them about, you know, losing. Uh, you you want them to go out and compete hard every time, but the, you're you're absolutely right. You you need to be gracious in, in defeat and gracious in victory, um, and, and that's that's part of the the learning that goes on in high school wrestling. Uh, one thing that I I, I try to uh, instill in, in young kids is that you know. You just always want to do go out there and compete your best. Uh, so sometimes that results in a victory. Sometimes it doesn't. But as long as you you can understand that you've competed uh, your best, that, that you should be you should be happy with yourself. 
And another thing that we try and educate kids on is, you know, just trying to score the next point. So, you know, sometimes sometimes you give up a takedown, but that's not the end of the world. you got to move forward and try and get an escape or try and get a reversal. And if you do that, then you try and get near fall, and then, you know, you just progress one, one part at a time. And I, I think then that takes – takes your mind off uh, putting the, all that importance on winning and losing. And I think, too, from a coaching perspective, and it's nice to talk to you with all of your experiences in coaching, um, we've talked several times on our broadcast this year that sometimes there is a coach on your staff who is the guy who's best equipped to go talk to that kid who just lost. And when you're in a dual meet like this or you're in a tournament, you just about need – a person in the corner, a person prepping the kid who's coming up, a person to talk to the person who just came off the mat. And uh, I'm sure you have different relationships with different kids. And mm -hmm. if you're 215 loses, that's different than when you're 132 loses and all those types of things. But uh, it takes a big staff to be able to manage correctly a high school wrestling team. Yeah, and, that, and man, that, that's really a feel thing, and you get a better feel of it. Um, the longer that you coach, but uh, having that feel whether a kid needs needs um, some of that tough love or whether they need build up some. Um, and then I feel like we kind of have coaches that specialize in those things, the, the tough love coach, uh, the build you up coach, and then the technique coach. Uh, the one thing that I've, I've recognized that I, I try and do better with is I want to talk to a kid about technique as soon as they come off the mat, <laughs> and they don't want to talk about that. But I, I have explained to them I need to talk to you about this right now because I may forget it. <laughs> um, but then you know, luckily we've got video that we can go back and and uh, check out to try and improve some things. But one, another thing that I've <laughs> I've I've tried doing is I'll grab them and they'll look at me like I don't want to talk to you right now, coach. And I say, hey, you know. Um, talk to me in five minutes about the wizard position. And they'll, they'll shake their head and say, okay. They'll go cool off, and they'll come back and remind me what I need to talk to them about. But, you know, whenever you're in the heat of a match and then you have a ne the next match coming up, and then you have to remember whether your odds are evens and you have to think about whether you're going to bump a kid or not, and there's a lot going on there uh, on top of trying to rem remember a, a certain technique that you want to improve on. Um, so you, you try and do your best in all aspects there. Now, you've been involved in a couple of setups like this, weeknights, double duels. What are the coaches from Huntington North saying to their kids right now, knowing that they've just seen them wrestle once, they've got to turn right back around and wrestle again? How much instruction can you give um, with a, a five or ten minute break? Really, what... <laughs> You know, if there's something that you, uh, a glaring weakness that you can fix real quick, you maybe go for it. But realistically, you put that last match behind you and you, you start fresh and go out there and get ready to, to compete new. Uh, you know, yeah, you can't get too high because you just won a big match or you can't get too low because you lost. You got to go out there, even keel, and um, kind of clear your mind and get ready to compete. So with that, we're going to play another round of commercials. There's less than eight minutes left before the start of this dual meet. The final one of the season on WZBD. You're listening to High School Wrestling right here on the Z-Team YouTube channel. Does your heating system need a good end-of-the-season tune-up from Masters Heating and Cooling? Now is the time to tune up your heating and cooling system. At Masters, we have technicians that can service most makes and models of furnaces and heat pumps at low-cost seasonal special pricing. Contact Masters Heating and Cooling. 1045 South 11th Street Indicator on the web at mastersheatcool.com to schedule your preventative maintenance checkup now. Adams Sports Medicine provides certified athletic trainers at many high school athletic events. These trainers specialize in injury prevention. Dr. Robert Kinney is board certified in physical medicine and rehabilitation as well as sports medicine, while Dr. David Coates is board certified in orthopedic surgery. Both Adams Medical Group physicians will be there to provide non-surgical and surgical care. Visit adamshospital.org or call 1-833-724-DOCS to schedule an appointment. 
Hi, this is Tina with Innovative Concepts Audio Video, your local premier technology provider. Do you need a new computer? A wide assortment of name brand PCs and laptops are offered in store. Custom systems can also be built to ensure it is perfect fit for you. Software solutions and repair services are available for your current PC as well. Trouble running your smart devices? Is your Wi-Fi slow? Let us help you design, install, and configure a Wi-Fi system to meet your needs. Call or stop in today or see us on the web at icav.us. We bring technology to you. Nine miles from Monmouth and nine miles from Fort Wayne, situated on 27, just south of 469, sits Nine Mile Restaurant, your home for great meals since 1837. Providing home-cooked meals to travelers between Decatur and Fort Wayne for over 180 years, Nine Mile has stood the test of time as an institution on the southern edge of Allen County. With seating on the family side, the bar side, and outdoors, there's always a reason to stop and have a meal. Nine Mile also has a full-service bar and a professional service that can cater your next event or party. The next time you're on your way to or from Fort Wayne, stop in. You've gone the distance. Welcome to Nine Mile. When it comes to your home, there are things the handyman in you wants to do. And then there's things that should be left to the experts. When it comes to seamless gutters, there's only one choice in our area, and that's SureFlow Seamless Gutters in Decatur. Tired of gutters that leak at every seam and every downspout? Call the guys at SureFlow. Putting on a new metal roof and want your gutters to do the job they're meant to do? Call SureFlow. Find them online at SeamlessGutters.net or give them a call. SureFlow Gutters, 260-888-5062. Hey athletes, are you looking to take your game to the next level? Look no further than Indiana Physical Therapy. Our expert team of sports performance specialists and personalized training programs will have you running circles around the competition. Injured or hurt on the field? Come see us. Our team of physical therapists are dedicated to helping you get back up to speed. With over 19 locations across Indiana, we can get you better, faster. Visit indianapt.com to schedule your appointment today. Welcome back here to Adams Central High School, to the SAC. I want to thank all of our sponsors once again. We've got about four minutes left. I saw Coach Curry motion to our man Phil down there that there might be a change. We'll see this. Thankfully, we're at the end of the season when you can identify everybody mostly by face. There are some shenanigans going on here between Keegan Bloom, Trevor Curry, and I believe Mav Dubaw down there. A little, a little bit of foul play, I think. <laughs> Two-on-one action. Ezra Lichty not looking like he wants to get involved at all. Uh-uh. Ezra got uh, thrown out at varsity last week against Jensen Boyd. Poor kid. Uh, all 83 pounds of him or 84 pounds of him. But, man, that delta lineup when they want to smash you they can take some of those kids some of their best kids and easily move up a weight and not miss a beat and i think we saw that last week against against adam central of course i wasn't there but you saw it uh, firsthand both as host and as as opponent um when they were at full strength this year they were the best team in two at yeah absolutely they they're just really solid down low and then you sprinkle in some of those guys up top, and the, I, I got a, just a brief second uh, to talk to that Isaac Moss um, during our duel, and uh, he that kid has improved tremendously. I, I'm really impressed with him, and I, I like even even opponent that you're wanting to beat really bad, you can really you, you can appreciate a kid that's that's put in the time and improved that as much as he has. Yeah, he's somebody that absolutely expects to to make the state finals this year. And, you know, you couldn't have said that a couple of years ago. Well, looking at heavyweight, it is a head scratcher in a lot of <laughs> ways in our semi-state. I think you would agree. I know you monitor a lot of that stuff on on Indiana Matt, and you look at some of the results and you think, how how did we get here? But it's been that way at semi-state the last few years where there have been some some crazy first and second round matchups at semi-state where you thought you had a guy pegged, this kid's going to make it, and then you get a Brandon Jellison or a James Hartle Road or those guys come out of nowhere and you haven't really seen them and all of a sudden you realize sometimes at heavyweight, it's uh, it's not a year-to-year -year thing. You don't build up. One class graduates and the next class, it's not, it's not necessarily the same. It's not like your 26-pounders who eventually make it to state as 38-pounders. Mm -hmm. You have to sort of sort of restart each year, but uh, I know Grady Baker has learned it the hard way for uh, Belmont. He went through the NE8 schedule at heavyweight 
on that second day at the NEA duels, and he went 0-5. And, and he was wrestling really, really well uh, at the beginning of the season. But when you're a sophomore and you only weigh 230, 240 pounds, it doesn't matter how good you are against some of those kids. The, the, the two years in age difference and the 50 pounds are going to do all the, all the work they need to. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm sure Grady Baker, though, is another one that you can talk about and, and kind of that he's not um, probably quite up to Isaac Moss level, but in a, a year or two here, he has improved tremendously. Um, I, I've been impressed with him, and uh, he stepped into that Belmont lineup and won some big matches. Yeah, I wonder next year, looking forward to Belmont's sort of issues when it comes to weight, because if you think about it, you lose Keegan Martin and Cole Mendez, and you lose Duke all up there as seniors, along with Devin Gephardt, who's been a good backup. The only buddy that you're, the only person that you're left with is a Luke Hirely, who is a little bit heavier than than Grady. So I wouldn't be surprised if Grady can thin out after football next year to be the varsity 215 pounder because Belmont may not have another option. So always uh, always thinking forward, but I think I say this in a lot of sports because I, I cover every high school sport that there is. If you spend too much time thinking about next year, you forget to enjoy this year. And I know I urge a lot of coaches, and I talk to a lot of head coaches outside of their normal arena and especially when they win a sectional title. And I know I've done this with you multiple times with your sectional and ACAC championships. Make sure that you enjoy it. Make sure that you don't spend all day Saturday looking forward to next Saturday because the season's going to be over in four weeks, five weeks, and then you're going to realize, well, now I've got to wait until next year for it to come back. I, I'll tell you, I may or may not have stood in the Jay County gym after regional last year with very few people in it uh, listening to We Are the Champions pretty loudly. So um, <laughs> I did enjoy that one quite a bit. But just like you said, you know, I, even to start the school year, um, the team that I have on the mat now isn't anywhere close to what I thought we were going to have at the beginning of the school year and for a variety of reasons. But uh, just like you said, you know, you think you can think all you want about next year and it's great to plan uh, but there's always some unforeseen circumstances that happen that you have to adjust to um, and you just hope that that you've recruited enough and that you're deep enough to be able to fill some of those holes uh, whenever whenever they occur so we're getting ready to start here it'll be Max Byerly taking it on Luke Toish Toish and Byerly Toish is senior I believe I, I believe he's ranked second in the semi-state at 150. And we're underway. He shoots in deep and sort of misses on the ankle there of Byerly. Max, just a sophomore for Adam Central, but quickly becoming somebody that you uh, expect to win a 50-50 match. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Toish definitely <laughs> looks older than <laughs> yeah. Byerly. That was just a real sweet... Uh, takedown there by Toish as he scores the opening takedown in this match. Josh Howard, our lead official, Troy Hahn, off to the side. And it looks like we've got some blood, and that'll give us an opportunity to play an ad right now. And we'll be right back after this. We select our insurance companies the same way you do, very carefully. When you work with us, you can count on receiving fast, courteous, and professional service and quality protection through Auto Owners Insurance. For a no-problem approach for your life, home, car, and business insurance needs, ask us about the no-problem company, Auto Owners Insurance. See Toby, Mark, Kyle, or Barb at Graber Insurance with offices on Highway 27 North and Burn and 623 West Monroe Street in Decatur. You may not know it, but Hitzer Patio and Fireplace is the perfect place for all your patio, fireplace, and grill needs. Big Green Egg Grills, gift certificates, tabletop pellet grills, Pelican Premium Coolers, cast iron kettles, Dutch ovens, and a wide variety of famous Hitzer stoves. Hitzer, 269 East Main Street in Bern is the perfect place to shop for all these fine products, accessories, and more. Welcome back here. And uh, I was joking earlier that we didn't know how good we would be. We should have been even more courageous because 
South Adams and Norwell has just ended. And we could have <laughs> jumped back in on uh, the 92-7 side of things. Listen to this. Norwell wins by fall in the final match to win 34-33. Wow, what a duel. Quite a duel. And um, I, uh, Boxel is a pretty solid kid. Um, seems like he's pretty good with staying off his back. Yeah, I don't know. It does. It didn't say what weight they started at, so okay. I don't know if they if they ended with uh, with heavyweight or gotcha. or not. But we are back underway here at 150 pounds. Luke Toysh has got the opening takedown. Max Byerly's got a nice little bracelet now on the left arm. Toysh pretty aggressive. Uh, a lot of good pressure forward. He's trying to run a cross wrist tilt there. Uh, now he's transitioning to a wing. He tried to run it. Back towards the head, uh, Josh Howard um, giving a penalty point because Tush grabbed the face while he was trying to run that. False start there by Byerly. So you got two to one Tush. Byerly on the stand up there. Um, Tush looking to return. Byerly still on his feet. Toysh was able to return him, go to that cross wrist, roll through tilt, uh, but he rolls him right out of bounds, no near fall. We're going to get a, a new piece of tape. Nope, we're going to stick with it. When the trainer starts putting on his rubber glove, though, you know that it, uh, it's not far away. <laughs> He's prepared. Stand up there by Byerly, but again, that tilt and he's going to score from it toy shiz he gets two from josh howard that'll make it four to one we're here at 150 pounds jarrett smith is up next yeah he's getting to that cross wrist on their feet and he's uh he, he's returning in the to the mat straight to that tilt position i know um dominic litchfield was pretty well known for that one <laughs> max knows he needs to get off to a quick start and he's been cautioned twice now Quick stop on the, uh, oh, Phil had to reset the clock since it didn't actually go. Byerly stands up, gets away. Let's see what Max can do on his feet here. Four to two. Byerly did a nice job there keeping his arms out front and staying away from that cross wrist. Nice shot there by Byerly. He's hitting it deep on Toys. He picks up a double leg. And man, Toys just strong enough to fight it off. And immediately, Toys counters. Byerly holds him off for the end of the period here. Byerly staying really composed in some of those uh, scrambles on their feet. Um, doing a great job for a sophomore there. We get another blood time. That'll give us a chance to uh, play another ad. We'll be right back after this. Dave Nathan from the Z Team here for the All-American Gas Stations in Monroe, Hoagland, Monroeville, Ossian, and throughout Z-Land, and it's happening again. The All-American stores not only give to countless charities, but they're also supporters of local high school athletics here on ZBD. The next time you need gas or a quick snack, stop in for a cold fountain pop, an energy drink, or a hot meal. From Monster Energy drinks to Snickers bars, from smoothies to a hot meal on the go, it's all at your local All-American stores. Check out the All-American stores' official Facebook page for more details and sales. The All-American stores, hometown owners, hometown staff, your hometown team. Welcome back here as we are still in a blood timeout. A little bit of work going on both on the cleaning side and on the wrapping side. This is the very first bout here at 150 pounds in this dual meet, but we do want to remind you that there are three forfeits on the Huntington North side as we get to the end. So once we get to the heavyweight match, it will be quick going until the end. We'll end at 144 pounds. Byerly trails 4-2 to two here as they're still on the cleanup on Toysh. Let's see. I got some uh, results here from my partner in crime, and we'll bring those to you here. They actually began at heavyweight. So it was Ethan Michael with the fall over Brian Roll at the end and the match you were most interested in was Dakota Sprunger and Hunter Douglas mm -hmm. 
and it was a major decision for Douglas. Okay. Uh, Byerly on a stand up, and then Toysh tried to get to that cross wrist tilt again and returned him with it. Uh, no near fall, though. Toysh really liked liking to go to that cross wrist, and if he can't get, get it, then uh, he turns him loose, and Byerly gets to his feet for an escape. Toysh uh, with a shot attempt. He, he's not shooting at the same volume as he was at the beginning of the match. Slowing down just a little bit. Scores 4-3. Uh, Toysh with about a minute 15 left in the second period. Um, Toysh shoots. And Byerly meets him there. They go out of bounds. They're back to center at neutral. Um, we got a pretty solid match here, Dan. Yeah, Byerly doing a great job as he's quick off the whistle again. I don't think Max is terribly going to be or be terribly upset if he gets called for another caution because he's trying to go at Toysh right off the bat, even if it ends up yielding him a point. I think he is relishing the opportunity to wrestle somebody at the top of this weight class. Douglas led 9-1 after the first period against Sprunger. A lot of near fall there. I haven't had the chance to see Norwell this year. I was not at the um, the round where Belmont wrestled them, so I didn't. I haven't seen them wrestle all year. Yeah, we had a duel with them earlier. Both of us were were missing a couple of guys, but um, Norwell's always got a solid group. Coach Johnson does a good job. Byerly hit with stalling there. I see attempted by Toysh and Byerly trying to roll through that, but he gives up the takedown. That makes it six to three. 15 seconds left here in the second period. Looked like Toysh hit a, tried to hit a um, left hand fireman's there and uh, Byerly tried to overhook and step over and, and, then, and then he tried to roll through again and wasn't able to do it. Toysh got that takedown. We got more blood time. Play an ad here and we'll be right back after this. For 71 years, the Kelly Automotive Group has serviced your automotive needs in Northeast Indiana and in Ohio. Kelly offers 14 brands of new vehicles and has over 500 used vehicles in stock. Kelly values your business and works hard for bank approval for all credit types. Visit drivekelly.com and stop at any friendly Kelly dealership. In Decatur, visit 1313 South 13th Street on U.S. Highways 27 and 33. Drive Kelly and drive with confidence. Hey, we're back here. Third period between Luke Toysh and Max Byerly. Toysh with a 6-3 to three lead. Byerly began this period on top. Yeah, Byerly really wrestling a solid match here. He had an attempted cradle ride there, and he's going to try and return. And he loses him, and Toysh gets an escape and then fires off a double leg right away. He takes him to his back. Um, He's getting near fall here. He adjusts to a half, and he's looking for the fall, and he gets it. Uh, man, that, that match. That's going to look differently on Indiana Matt than, uh, than what it really was. Yeah, that was a tight match. Byerly was really wrestling well there, and, and Toysh uh, just stepped up the aggression and uh, was able to hit that double to his back and, and kind of caught Byerly snoozing a little bit. Now up at 157 pounds. C.J. Jemison for Huntington North, Jarrett Smith for Adam Central. Before we forget, we want to tell you that Johnson's Auto Sales on the corner of 13th Street and Decatur, uh, 13th Street and Adams in Decatur, where you always drive quality at a better price, is proud to be a wrestling booster, along with the head of the Curb Driving Academy here in Adams County. Proud to support um, what is a, a true tradition here in Adams County, and that is an avid love of. Uh, uh, and following of this sport in, in all areas. Underhooks here by Smith. As he snaps Jemison down, now gets into a more familiar front headlock position. Grabs an ankle. Jemison comes right at him, and they go out of bounds before any points are scored there, but Jemison's showing a little bit of strength there against Smith. Huntington North leads the team score six to nothing after the pin by Toysh. 
coming together of heads there. Jemison using his head a little bit more. A little slap to the head there, a shot. Smith fights it off. Smith tries to snap down there, but Jemison stands strong. <laughs> shot all the way through that one, Smith did and missed. Now Jemison in on a double leg. He's going to dump Smith. Ooh, right on his elbow, on his arm. Gets the takedown. So Jemison with the opening takedown here after a minute of uh, some good scrambling. Looks like he's got both wrists tied up on the top. He's got a lot of pressure forward. Um, but not really working on anything right now. Not getting to half or anything like that. Smith looking looking to lock up a, a Peterson there. He's got that wrist underneath trying to turn in and get to the Peterson. And he hits a stand up and uh, gets to his feet for the escape. So two to one is how this one will end here in the first period. Great job for Smith to keep wrestling there and get the escape right as the period ended. Smith deferred and Jemison score, uh, chose bottom. We're going to have another blood timeout here. And they're coming faster than I can program them into the computer. But we'll be right back after this message. Timmy Takedown Tree Service on US 224, three miles east of Decatur, is firewood for sale. $30 a scoop, $75 for a six foot bed, $85 for an eight foot bed. Timmy Takedown Tree Service can give you a free estimate on removing storm damaged trees, grinding stumps, or trimming trees. Call 728 9120 and talk with Jake to set up an appointment. Timmy Takedown Tree Service has been in the area's best and most trusted tree service for 50 years. Stop out or call today. Back here live at Adam Central. Blood's all cleaned up. We want to thank these young men today for bleeding a little to allow us to get some of these ads in. We've got more ads than we can possibly handle sometimes on a weeknight. Jemison gets the escape to start the second period. And I think that's a, a statement on, on just how much local businesses and the community support this sport here in Adams County. Yeah, it's pretty amazing. I, I know a lot of other communities and, and teams are, are jealous of the support that um, we receive right here in, in uh, Adams and Jay County. Jemison Smith still on their feet here in the second period. Up next for Adams Central will be Matt Heiser. Taking on Corbin Kalhofer. Jemison, a pretty physical wrestler here. He's had some good snaps and um, pretty powerful guy. Huntington North not having a whole lot of team success this year. But uh, they've had some, some interesting dual meet scores where they've come up with 24 or 30 points against some of the better teams in the area. To watch how you match up with them. I noticed that they had a toy sh not in the lineup tonight, so. Nice double leg there by Smith. He finishes it off despite a strong cross face by Jemison. And he's trying to work up from the ankles. Doesn't have the two yet. Now he's got it. Reaches across, tries to, <laughs> tries to side cradle, but Jemison comes right back over the top of him and lands on top. Reversal, Smith on his back. Jemison too strong there. And three minutes and 38 seconds, it's Jemison who gets the fall. And it looked like, Eric, that Jarrett had some things locked up there that he was going to be able to turn him. And all of a sudden, as he tried to bring it over, Jemison just overpowered him. Yeah, yeah, he tried to roll that cradle through, and it just it just wasn't one that you could roll through, especially against a guy that's, uh, that's that strong. Up now at 165 pounds, Matt Heiser against Corbin Kalhofer. Kalhofer works for a headlock right away. Sporting the tights tonight. A couple of Huntington North guys wearing the tights. Heiser with just he just kind of ducked under that that headlock and and got that first takedown and now he's dead. He was at a decent ride. He's got to return him and solid return. Uh, working to a half now. Um, he's got a leg in. He's got a half. Uh, he's looking to turn him there. He rotates over on top. He's chest to chest. He's got a pin. 
So Matt Heiser scores the fall here on the final night of the regular season for the Jets. 39 seconds in the first period. Thank you, partner. That's the kind of information information we need. I'm running low on Pepsi here. <laughs> It'll be a two Pepsi type of night. Max Carr back on the mat against Dean Van Ryn. At 175 pounds, up next will be Trevor Curry against Oscar Baltazar. I haven't had the opportunity to see Max Carr a whole lot. I, I, I've seen Dakota Perry, but uh, Max quite a bit bigger than his brother, Miles, huh? Yeah, he had a shoulder injury. I can't remember if that was at Lafayette Jeff. Um, we saw Dakota Perry some as a backup there. Adam Central thankfully has some, some cover in those weights. Yeah, Coach Curry told me earlier in the season they expect to have quite a bit of depth, and they, they do. They've got some solid – they got a solid var varsity team, obviously, but some solid uh, JV guys on their team. Nice double leg there by Carr. Gets into an Iranian position. Comes through out the back. Opening takedown. Leg got caught up there. Yep. Had that heel trap to his – his backside there, and they stopped it for potentially dangerous. Our man Troy Hahn all over that one. Yep. Seen Car Troy a lot this year. Car gets to a wing there. Um, he's got him flat. He just needs to. Yep. He needs to run forward on that wing, and that's what he's doing right now. Um, he's kind of taking his time. He wants to make sure he feels comfortable. He's got it. And he's stretching it out. Instead of running around the head, he's stretching it out. Got chest to chest. Uh, looks like he got too near fall, but then he lost it. Now he's now he's transitioned all the way to a near side cradle. Um, he's trying to run that over. Looks like he has that too. Yeah, he lost it. I, I thought we were getting close to seeing a Troy Han thunderpin. <laughs> he's giving Troy a workout here. Yeah, uh, he did get too near fall there, so. Um, Car up to or six nothing right now. He's looking to get to a half, um, but it was on the opposite side. <laughs> he, he transitioned really well there and turned him as the period ends. A uh, lot of action there. He got two more near fall. It's up eight zero. I apologize if you're having trouble following me, but there's a lot of different positions that he transitioned to. There's one time he was out in front and. Uh, looked like he might give up an escape, and then he was at a near side cradle, and then he was at a far side half. So a lot of action there in that first period. Three different near fall situations there for Carr, who now begins the second period in bottom position. He leads eight to nothing. Stand up, turn, gets his escape, nine to nothing now. Gets a, a collar tie there, pushing forward. Um, He's working to set up that double leg again, I believe. <laughs> he takes it. I thought he was checking his watch to see what time <laughs> it was. I think he thought he had some blood there. Mm -hmm. well, hopefully we're not trying to get blood time every match. Uh, nice shot there. What is that there that you just saw? Yeah, he was in on a uh, fireman's and... Um, Car caught a hook and kind of just threw him by. He spun through it, and they're back to their feet. But then uh, Car snapped him down and got to a, a takedown there. Now up 11 nothing. One minute left here in the second period. Now trying to work a cross face cradle. Yep. Trying to get it right. If he's now oh. the arm comes out for his opponent, and it's going to be a reversal. You've got to stay close enough to the body there to not allow that arm to come through. Exactly. Uh, looks like he kind of caught an elbow roll here. He's trying to sit through that. Uh, Ele elevate that foot and sort of come out on top. He is. He's trying to elevate that right foot of Van Ryn. Now he reaches for the head for a second, but he puts himself in a position to give up potentially near fall with a half Nelson. Our view's not great where we are right now. Now he comes. Now he catches and does some head hunting. And as a thunder pin in our future, there it is. <laughs> yeah, Van Ring got really high with a leg in, and uh, um, Carr able to catch the head, and, and can I circle out front and, and get the pin. Three minutes and 49 seconds for Max Carr. 
And just like that, we're tied at 12 to 12. And that'll bring up Oscar Baltazar and Trevor Curry. Trevor, of course, last year, that uh, wild and uh, controversial and disappointing and all of those adjectives match at semi-state last year with eventual semi-state champion Alex Deming and what uh, was a wild sequence. I was lucky enough to be Matt's side on the ice and uh, my shutter was flying and it was a, a very close call. He was that close to being a state qualifier and maybe a state medalist. Yeah, and and I know you guys have talked before, as you get up into that semi-state, uh, everybody roots for the people from their area, so really rooting hard for Trevor there. And man, I just, I thought he had it, and then, you know, kind of a little scramble there, and then he didn't. It was, I, you know, our hearts broke for him. Curry with the, no, I was gonna say, opening takedown, I thought so, I just didn't see him raise the two, two points. Trevor's gonna let him up to start this period. Josh Howard tells Oscar to put his foot on the green line. Baltazar fighting for risk control against Curry. Curry with a low single there, circles around, collects the other ankle, and gets his two. Now we're trying to put it in the, put the boots in and go for a ride. He tries to sink in the right leg. Now instead he's got a wrist and he's got a half Nelson. And he's going to turn him over. And there's the fall. A minute and 29 seconds. Trevor Curry is your man. We'll be right back after this. Expert transmission on US 224 in Decatur and on US 124 in Bluffton is the place to go for not only transmission help, but also full service general auto and truck repair. Matt, Corey, and Tyler at Expert Transmission are experienced and ASC certified mechanics who can diagnose and fix your family or work vehicle. Call Steve or Dustin soon to set up an appointment. Expert Transmission has the best warranty in the business. Five years and 100,000 miles on a new transmission and can give you a free estimate. Call today at 724-2434 or like Expert Transmission on Facebook. Right back here at the SAC. Adam Central wrestling Huntington North. 18 to 12, Adam Central leads after that fall by Trevor Curry. Now up is Keegan Bloom wrestling Zach Bishop from Huntington North. He finishes off a double leg, inserts the half. And a big old thunderfall in 32 seconds as Keegan Bloom picks up a win. Bloom, Curry. Looked, uh, Bloom looked really solid there. Underhooked a high crotch and lifted that and hit a half on the way down. And really smooth. He's really an unknown right now for Adam Central as we just haven't seen that much of him. Can't really judge him, I don't think, by what he was asked to do at Team State with some of those tough Tell City and Rochester guys as that's sort of a different animal than the individual tournament where you're focused on a lot of different things. Mm -hmm. Zach Worm up now, taking on Carson Moyer. See what Worm can do here. We've seen Worm be a little tentative with those muscle injuries that he's had. He's just a, a big, powerful fella. Of course, headed to Indiana State next year to play some football. I uh, was talking to someone today that said in discussion about his throwing season here in the spring that Indiana State football workouts and practices and everything, those actually begin before the state track and field finals. And okay. that if he were to qualify for the state finals, he would actually have to begin late on football season. And I know that uh, anybody who knows Zach his, his true passion really is playing football, and that's why he's going to college to do it. So uh, interesting to see what he does in a spring season here as a senior when it comes to throwing. He's one of the best throwers. He broke the school record in the shot put at Belmont last year. I was lucky enough to be there that day, but uh, certainly with his build, he's somebody that you can expect to, to go pretty far in, in, in track and field. And you as a track and field coach, Correct. Former, former. Former track and field yes. coach would know about these kinds of things. Absolutely. Um, I, uh, you know, that was one of those, uh, uh, we have a teacher in the building that has a pulse. Um, <laughs> we're we're going to see if he can help coach track. So 
Now, right. where would you rate that that coaching uh, job along with alongside your wide receiver coach um, work that you did a year or two ago? Were well, you wide receivers? What were you coaching I, in football? I, I was the head seventh grade um, coach at East Jay Middle School for five years. Now, does that translate over to fantasy football success? It does not, <laughs> and I don't know if it translates over to actual football <laughs> success, but. Uh, Stalling called here on the heavyweight Moyer from Huntington North. There's one thing you can count on when you're watching wrestling is you can always add in a little bit of color commentary in the first period of a heavyweight match. <laughs> That's for you sure. You don't really need to say what's happening. The people can get the idea that mm -hmm. they're pushing each other and no one's scored yet. Yeah. And, you know, I've uh, in the room... Um, I've had a couple guys come in and work with our heavyweights, and there really is an art to it. Uh, you know, that hand fighting, keeping your head in the right position so it doesn't get snapped down, um, you know, pushing and moving your feet so you don't look like you're stalling. And uh, I, I, I know it's a little bit underappreciated because it's not enjoyable to watch all the time, but uh, there, like I said, there really is an art to it, I feel. So Worm's going to start the second period on bottom. He's struggling to get up here. The Huntington North wrestler getting that, that uh, wrist chop there and, and able to pull him to a hip a couple of times. This uh, is the young man I was talking about earlier that, that gave Phoenix Boxel a pretty good match, if I remember right, against mm -hmm. South Adams. It's a little bit deceiving when you see him walk onto the mat, but... He did a pretty nice job of riding, and he's doing a nice job with Worm here in the first 30 seconds, and pretty decent at hand fighting, too. Yeah, he does look a little bit undersized against Worm. Um, I don't know how much longer he can keep returning Worm, uh, but I feel like one of them's going to lose a little bit of steam here. <laughs> Rex just texted me, Dancing Bears. Nah, I don't know. If it, sometimes it depends. they got to be equal. Equal height and weight to be dancing bears. Worm now turns into Moyer, catches a half Nelson at least temporarily. He's trying to get all the way around. He's going to try for a headlock now, yeah, yeah. and he just puts his weight into him, and Moyer is going to be toast here in about two seconds. Moyer, or, uh, Worm adjusting. Moyer trying to fight it off. There's the fall. Yeah, Three minutes and 24 seconds. That's just something that... Yeah. <laughs> As a coach, you turn in like that, you'd say don't do that in a, in a heavyweight match there with a guy that, that's worm size. It worked out great for him. We'll be right back after this message. Bowers Paint Studio on West Monroe Street in Decatur is hands down the best auto body repair shop in the Midwest. That's why your friends and neighbors give Bowers Paint Studio a five-star rating on Facebook. Your family ride get dinged in an accident? Take it to Bowers for a free estimate. Need a custom paint job for your collectible car or motorcycle? Bowers Paint Studio is the place to go. Nate works with all the insurance companies and can help you get a loaner. That's Bowers Paint Studio on West Monroe Street in Decatur. Welcome back there. After that fall by Zach Worm, Adam Central took a 30-12 to 12 lead. At 106 pound, Miles of Car received a forfeit, and that gives Adam Central a 36-12 lead. And we're now underway at 113 pounds, where Kale Beer is wrestling Trenton Walker. And right now, Beer, um, Walker has him in a front headlock. He had underhooks there. Beer was able to latch onto one of those elbows and uh, and hit a fireman's there. Beer on top, 2 nothing. Um, he drops to a single leg as Walker comes up uh, to not give up the escape and then transitions over to a double. Uh, to stay on top, and now he's got him flattened out. Looks like he's got a cross wrist, um, looking to work to a, a wing on the left side there. He's got a pressure forward, and it looks like he's got, a, got that wing in. Walker able to grab his hand and pull his arm out front and, and get out of that. Just three bouts left after this one in our coverage of the dual meet season here on WZBD. Now a cradle locked up. Is he going to go back? Is he going to go through? He comes around to the other side. Yeah. Going to try to pull it for towards him. And we like to we like to say there high leg over and a, or, or run his hips to the mat. Uh, I 
I think he's lost his grip on that cradle now, so he's on a hip. He's got a he's back up behind him and he's got a ankle hooked and he's just gonna run that out of bounds and get a restart here with six seconds left in the first period. Trenton Walker, the opponent here for Kale Beer. He'll have six seconds to attempt an escape. Quick stand up there, taken back by Beer. Rolls through on a tilt, gets one count from Troy Hahn. But it's not enough. Another thing to keep in mind, Eric, as we talk about what's coming up, we're only about 30 days away from spring training baseball. I just looked at that today. I wanted to see who the Reds played on opening day, and they play the Washington Nationals, which I know WZBD um, listeners are focused on the, the Cubs this coming season. Beer turns in and attempts to make a switch, see if he goes headhunting here. Looks like Walker has a leg in, or ha tried to get a leg in, and Beer caught it, and he's going to come out behind through the legs. He's got the legs split. Um, he's going to try and turn that into near fall. He's, yeah. And here, Coach Curry say keep those legs split. Um, I thought he might transition into a Turk there, uh, maybe bring come down to a Navy ride, but he uh, switched up to a cross wrist here. Um, he's going to try and get to that cross wrist wing tilt. Uh, he's been working that quite a bit this match. About a minute through here in the second period, they go out of bounds. WZBD will be your home again for the Chicago Cubs. I think the Cubs are going to be fairly competitive this year with a lot of young talent, a lot of people talking about the likes of Pete Crow, Armstrong, and some of those guys. And before long, it'll be fantasy baseball season and spring training time. We'll have a couple of spring training games for you in late March before the opening day, and then also IndyCar coming up before you know it here, four to six weeks away from the streets of St. Petersburg. A couple of new IndyCar races on the schedule for this upcoming year. I was lucky enough, Eric, I made it to four IndyCar races last year. That's a new record for me in a season and got to take Gus to his very first Indy 500, and that was a, a real treat for me as a father to sort of share that experience with him. That's great. Any new tracks? I uh, made it to mid-Ohio for the first time this year. That was pretty fun. Okay. Beer now with that wing again, trying to walk it over. That mid-Ohio track is out in the middle of nowhere. Grass parking lot, nothing. And then there's this great, great track. Now Beer's got him turned with that wing. He's messing with the head. He's kind of kind of trap it with his legs. That's not comfortable to be in. It is not. Troy Hahn going to get some near fall counted out there right before the end of the second period. 7-0 going into the third period with uh, Walker of Huntington North's choice. He, he takes neutral. Beard a collar tie, he's snapping. Um, he's just looking to go, get his go behind here. Uh, Kind of trying to chase an ankle there. Walker's throwing an arm up, trying to stop him, and Beer switches direction and is able to get the two. Walker's kind of circling out front. He's got a hold of a leg there and a wrist. Uh, not really putting Beer in danger, just kind of uh, slowing him down. Um, Beer then flattening him out. Uh, working to get to a wrist and, and get to his, his wing again. In on the major decision right now, 9 and nothing. In good position to score that extra bonus point. Transitions to half, but Walker gets his hip down, uh, tries to half the other side. Walker with his hip down again. It's not a lot, of, a lot going right now. Beard tries to get to that cradle position, and now he has it. A mistake there by Walker. Beard now Beard's has got the cradle locked up. Walker breaks that hold, but 
yields three near fall points. That'll make the score 12 to nothing. Beer going to walk this around. He's got an arm caught. Got far arm. Caught underneath Walker. And again, Beer circling around. Putting pressure down on the face of Walker, who's trying to bridge. I just got him pulling that wrist through across his face. And, and that's how it'll end. 15 to nothing with the tech fall at the buzzer. We'll be right back after this. When you're doing new construction or remodeling and you need drywall, the name to call is Paul Baker Drywall. Paul Baker Drywall does championship caliber work and gives you free estimates. Paul uses all the latest styles for your approval and his work is always guaranteed. Give Paul a call today at 701-4388. That's 701-4388. When it's time for drywall, use the best Paul Baker drywall. And we're back here after Jackson Bingham receives a forfeit at 120 pounds. Dylan Ogg at 126, taking on Patrick Flowers. Adam Central going to win this duel. They're up 47 to 12. Ogg with a nice slide by. Um, gets a takedown. Works to transition. It looks like he's trying to transition to Splato here. Um, and he gets that leg out, and now he's behind. Look at this guy. This man has joined us. Talk about a mega cast. <laughs> Maybe he'll give us an update here. He even brought his own equipment. Good thing he did, because we don't have another headset for him. <laughs> we are about to be joined by my regular partner here. Hog doing a nice job riding on top here. Uh, he had a spiral there for a second. Now he transitions to a cradle. We a little hot for you there? Yeah, it was coming in a little hot. Cold outside, but hot in here. Well, that board's a little bit different than what you're used to. Ooh. Rex, you uh, had a great match over there, it sounds like, as Hog tries to hit a tilt there for a second. Things got interesting here at the end. Eric still on? I think he is. Did we kick you off? I don't know. Here, try that. Talk. Yep. I, I can't hear myself. <laughs> oh, because I, I climbed in here. Hang on. Maybe that was intentional. <laughs> try that, Eric. Can you hear now? Yeah. There you go. Can you hear me? No, I cannot. Let me tell you, this guy. Blame the board. Can you hear now? Yeah, I can hear <laughs> Well, we go. can't hear him. We got dingle and dangle and dongling going on over here. I can hear it. You good? I no, still, he's still out. It's this board, I think. No, I can't hear myself. <laughs> it's two to nothing as Dylan Ogg leads Patrick Flowers at 126 pounds. You good? Yeah. I, I'm good, and I can hear Eric. Yeah. Nope, still can't hear Eric. I haven't plugged in yet. Oh, okay. I think we lost him. Is he still turned the right way? There we go. Is that better? I can hear. Can you hear me? Yeah. No, I still can't hear Eric. Why is that? If Rex can hear him, then maybe we're good. Yeah. Can you hear me, Rex? Barely. <laughs> Barely. Does he need turned up? Let's see. Well, this is him right there, right? Yeah, there he is. You guys got your headsets all crossed up here. Oh. There, can you talk now? Yeah. <laughs> I can't hear him. <laughs> I'll just get out of here. <laughs> we can hand it over to you. You can join us. We want to hear what you have to say. Now I can't hear anything. I, oh, that's I, why. I can. That's because. <laughs> <laughs> there. Are, are we 
we back? Now we're all here. I'm not. You can't? I, I can hear you. I can hear you. Yeah, you can hear me. I can't hear you, but that's okay. okay. Oh, that's okay. That's right. Well, as long as it's coming through on their, on their end. I, I was talking to myself for a little while. <laughs> I don't <laughs> know. <laughs> Sometimes I never know whether we're actually on or not. Can you guys hear now? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. yeah. See, we're all good. It just right. took a little, little trial and error there. <laughs> Well, Rex, what I was trying to say was we could have darn near left you and come back here and not missed a beat. We didn't give ourselves enough credit. I, I tell you what, you talk about the, the mega cast. <laughs> <laughs> Dylan Ogg up 6-1 to one here near the end of the second period. Adam Central leads this one 47-12. Ogg able to get the two right as the period ends there to go up 8-1. You've missed a lot of thunder. Thunder pins from our buddy Troy. I could hear him <laughs> all the way from <laughs> South Adams. I didn't even have a headset on. Do they register on the on the Richter scale down there? And they go neutral to start the third period. Aug with a shot attempt. I didn't know if the thunder pin if that went across the continental divide or or not. <laughs> hey, did you get an interview with uh, young Miss Troutner? No, we did not. She's down there doing doing her thing with Dad. So I talked to her on her own. So eight to one the score here, 20 seconds left, or 20 seconds into the third period, I should say. Dylan Ogg in on a single leg right now. He pops his head out for another two, make it 10 to one. We're gonna have a forfeit here to Brayson at 132. That'll leave Mav and Xander at the end. This portion of the Jets lineup that is so young Ninth and 10th graders. Dylan. At this point in a wrestling season, though, as a freshman, once you've got 30 to 35 matches, especially on a night like tonight, they're not really freshmen anymore, but those freshman eyes will come out when we get to that first round of regional or to semi-state. Sure. Aug trying to lock up a Merkel there, um, stretch him out and roll that through. It, it uh, doesn't look like a knife throw to you. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, Old school we, knife throw. We, we should maybe go through some time and just write down all the terminology. And then and try to this standardize. E this equals this. We are only calling yeah. it this. Break out the decoder ring. Uh huh. So those these young freshmen here, Eric, kind of remind me of that freshman group you had four years ago. Absolutely. That came in. I mean, these kids, I mean, he could very easily get a couple of these guys to state. Yeah. Uh, they come in, they don't really wrestle, wrestle like freshmen. They're, Correct. They're ready to compete at the first whistle. Back underway, 24 seconds left. If Phil starts the clock. Ooh, somebody getting feisty here in a 47 to 12 match. Start the clock. We had an overtime match that started the first sudden victory. Oh. They didn't start the clock Ooh. on. Never did start the clock. Watch yourself, get your head out of there. That was smart by August. He could have been in position to give up a fall there at the end. Yeah. The, uh, had a little trouble rolling those cradles his head. tonight. Um, he tried to roll that cradle and lost it and uh, almost ended up on his back. But like you said, he, he very wisely bailed on that one. See, now we saw Josh Howard just tuck his whistle inside of his shirt at this girls' state finals. Dan and I saw <laughs> Crouch make the drastic mistake. He stuck his whistle in his shirt. He went to start two girls. And he went, <laughs> and he blew, and he had no whistle in his mouth. <laughs> and, man, did they give him the raspberries on that. We gave him crap all night after that. Oh, Kurt doesn't deserve that. So <laughs> yes. now at yes, 138, does. we've got Solomon Barnum for Huntington North taking on Maverick Dubois. Did you get any guests <laughs> down there? No, it was all you? We were flying hot. I barely got on the air. I mean, we were 30 seconds into the first match when he threw the switch to me. Okay. Dubois in on a single here, tries to work that up to his feet. Now in the Iranian position, and he finishes it. So two nothing for Dubois. Barnum turns, faces, gets his escape. Nice ankle oh. pick there by Dubois. John Smith. So that I hear Smith single and perfect single. For that one, Rex. Smith. I think that Smith, the, those are. Yeah. There's no such thing as perfect. It's Smith. <laughs> <laughs> well, 
Well, I think that that's what Coach Smith called it. So some people call it a perfect single. When you're as old as me, it's a John Smith uh -huh. little single. Now front headlock series by Dubois. Comes around, reaches the near ankle leg. Gonna pop his head out here. He may try to transition to a near side cradle there, and he does. Got it locked up. And your last thunder pin of the night is coming here. Turn it up, people. <laughs> Boom, baby. 90 seconds. We'll be right back after this. Luganville Excavating is a proud sponsor of high school wrestling on WZBD. Their son, Memphis, a sophomore at AC, is doing his best to overcome adversity and wrestle for the Flying Jets. Memphis has made tremendous strides and is determined to continue. You can follow his journey on Facebook at Memphis's Ride. As Luganville Excavating works hard for their customers, follow Memphis's challenge to make the team. He would love to hear from you. Welcome back here for the final bout of tonight's mega cast. We got the three headed monster here in the broadcast booth. Kenyon Buckland Brewer is wrestling Xander Schwartz. Dane Filling here. Coach Eric Myers, Rex Brewer, up from the Stardome on his way back to Decatur. Schwartz ends up behind Buckland on the edge of the mat. No takedown yet. He needs to return him to the mat, but they step out of bounds. And no score. 62 to 12 is the team score. After two complete wrestle matches, Dan, I thought it was later than that. It was only 8.30. So there, Rex, that snap down to the underhook position. Um, I've heard Bulldog and uh, also Cow Catcher on that one. Cow Catcher, Iowa Dump, Bulldog. Iowa Dump, okay. We got chicken, uh, underhook and one in the head. Yeah, yeah. Chin rip. A little chin rip there by... Technically, Schwartz. Technically, it's not a chin rip. You're supposed to have it underneath there, but the guys grab the chin anyways. And it sure looks chin. like one. It's <laughs> illegal, but they do it all the time. Back underway here, a minute into the first period. Saw a flagrant misconduct match end from a biting. Ooh. Interesting. Those are always fun. We'll talk about that after Schwartz's match. Of course, we got one night off this week, and then we're right back at it on Friday night from Bluffton. Schwartz comes out on top for a takedown there and puts in a half. He's going to try to end the night right here. It's a That's a deep half. And he's got him stacked there. Not stacked Not enough. Not stacked <laughs> enough. He tried to bring up the leg and hold it there. Uh, yep, he bulldogs him over. Yep, Iowa dumps him. Yeah. <laughs> Cow catcher. Cow catcher's both. Okay. Cow catcher's okay. both. And it goes for a fall, minute and 35 seconds and that makes the final team score 68 to 12. So with that um, we are going to play a round of commercials here and we'll be right back with some closing thoughts right after this. Luganville Excavating is a proud sponsor of high school wrestling on WZBD. Their son Memphis, a sophomore at AC, is doing his best to overcome adversity and wrestle for the Flying Jets. Memphis has made tremendous strides and is determined to continue. You can follow his journey on Facebook at Memphis's Ride. As Luganville Excavating works hard for their customers, follow Memphis's challenge to make the team. He would love to hear from you. DDD Maintenance and Repair, owned and operated by Shane Reynolds, has your local professionals for heavy duty truck and diesel engine repair. DDD Maintenance and Repair also offers full service sand and glass blasting for your surface restoration projects. Whether it's getting your heavy duty truck and diesel engine running like new or sand blasting your project to look like new, we have a blast renewing the past. Give Shane and the guys a call at 260-223-5442. That's DDD Maintenance and Repair. Miller Land Surveying is one of Northeast Indiana's premier full-service land surveying firms. From lot and boundary surveys to large topographical, commercial, and industrial surveys, Miller Land Surveying can help you with all of your surveying needs. With a seasoned staff, the latest technology, and a drive for perfection, rest assured your project will be done professionally and efficiently completed every time. MLS is proud to support today's broadcast and encourages everyone to get out and support local athletes. Wygan Construction in Fort Wayne is committed to providing quality, value-based construction services, and that commitment begins with our employees. We strive to anticipate and exceed clients' expectations, 
honor our commitments, and provide for the communities in which we live. If this sounds like the place where you'd like to work, visit our website at Wygain Construction to see our open positions and fill out an application. We want you on our team. Wygain Construction. Trust. Well built. This is Ed Thurman, and I've driven across every highway and bridge in Indiana calling high school games on the radio since 1972. We take those bridges and overpasses for granted sometimes, but knowing they're made right here in Decatur at pre-stress puts me at ease and allows me to focus on the game. If you're looking for a career right here in Adams County, starting at over $20 an hour, go to prestressservices.com and click on Careers. From general labor with no experience to driving those long beams to the job site with your CDL, pre-stress might just have the job you're looking for. Hey, welcome back here for the final time as we wrap up our mega cast and a fitting end to the dual meet season as we turn all of our attention over to the individual tourneys beginning with Friday's ACAC tournament at Bluffton. A little ack ack action for you before we get to the NEA on Saturday. Uh, Rex Brewer, Eric Myers joining me here for a final rundown of what transpired today. No real surprise for Adam Central, Bishop Dwenger, Huntington North, not up to their level, but we saw some good things from some of those Adam Central guys. You saw a very interesting match between Norwell and South Adams, and it uh, sounds like South Adams kind of leaving with a sour taste in their mouth. You know, that is going to make for some interesting pairings for the sectional. I mean, that sectional, I mean, before you even get more interesting and you drag Delaware County into the regional, that sectional is a bloodbath. I mean, there's guys at every weight class, I mean, that are just going to bounce around. And, I mean, bringing the ACAC with, like, three or four schools into there, and then he eight, and he eight with, like, three or four schools. I mean, it's it's going to get ugly. Yeah, I, it'll be a tough seed meeting. On, I told Dane it's Wednesday. Uh, they made that change last year. Uh, I was always used to that Monday seed meeting, but now they take a little bit of extra time to make sure that you have your weight management plan and, uh, correct and that you're at your uh, – correct weight classes but uh that's going to be a tough seed meeting but fortunately a lot of uh, the schools in the sectional see each other so uh hopefully that works each other out but then you still have a few of those weight classes where, where you have some guys <laughs> oh you went and you did it I did. that's what you get for for got, yanking somebody's chain i guess i think i got a little you, too animated there if you're wearing the uh, he, if you're wearing the headset that's got athletic tape hold the wire in the top that's you, you that's you professional grade you can't right touch there. it keep your hands in your pocket um but, yeah, a lot of those teams see each other. There's a few guys that have changed weight classes um, that will make for some interesting conversation. But now with the, some of that seed criteria, it usually takes care of itself. So the fun part for us is on Sunday during High School Wrestling Weekly, we'll be able to highlight what we've seen from the conference tournaments, and then we'll be able to uh, put on our Nostradamus hats and talk about sectional seeding and what that looks like. And, of course, there's always a surprise thrown in. There's always a Blackford kid or a Union City kid that, that jumps in there. Of course, Eric has his pulse on the TEC throughout the season, so nothing's going to surprise him out of, out of Union City. But you never know with those Blackford guys. Yeah, they, uh, they, they've got a few kids that will jump in there. But, um, you know, they, I was impressed with the amount of girls that they had out this year. They may have had a couple more girls than they did guys. So... We're about to sign off here. We want to thank everybody for joining us for our mega cast on multiple media today. I want to make sure that I was on two broadcasts, two different locations in one night. Oh, just, that's good. Just to set a record. That's good. On Friday, join us at 6 o'clock for the action. We'll probably be on the air just a little bit before that. And then on Saturday, you can join us on YouTube for a 9 o'clock start for the opening round as we'll switch over to 92.7 in, uh, later in the morning. And then on Sunday, of course, 7 o'clock for High School Wrestling Weekly. And then no wrestling through the week unless we start calling middle school matches. Man, I, I, I could use there a break. I could use oh. a break. <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up here. At 150 pounds, we began with Max Byerly taking on Luke Toish, and it was a very good match, a very competitive match, Rex, until Toish went and turned Byerly and got the fall in 4 minutes and 49 seconds, giving Huntington North a 6 to nothing lead. They laid 12 to nothing after C.J. Jemison Scored a fall over Jarrett Smith in 3 minutes and 38 seconds. Adam Central got on the board with Matt Heiser. 39-second fall over Corbin Kalhofer at 165. Then at 175's Max Carr got the fall in 3 minutes and 49 seconds to tie it up against Dean Van Ryn. And then it was a run of falls for Adam Central. A minute 29 for Trevor Curry at 190. 215, Keegan Bloom 
had the pin in 32 seconds. Zach Worm pinned his man in three minutes and 24 seconds. Miles Carr got a forfeit at 106. It was a six minute tech fall for Kale Beer at 113 to put Adam Central up 41 to 12 against Trenton Walker. Jackson Bingham took a forfeit at 120. Dylan Ogg won 126 uh, by a score of 10 to three over Patrick Flowers. Brayson got a forfeit at 132 and then Mav Dubois pinned Solomon Barnum in 90 seconds to go up 62 to 12. And to get to 68 to 12, it was Xander Schwartz with a minute and 35 second pin over Kenyon Buckland Brewer. So with that, signing off here on the Megacast, we will talk to all of you Friday night. All three of us will be there live from Bluffton High School.